Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a uh, another kind of a special uh, painting today. It uh, seems like I'm doing uh, something unique each uh, class this uh, this year so far, but uh, we're going to do a watercolor painting. That's not unique, but uh, we're going to try to do a, uh, it's called a two brush challenge, and uh, I'm going to try to paint this painting with only two brushes. Um, I got it from uh, there's a website called pmp-art, pmpart.com. It's a place where photographers put their photographs and they ask you to paint them. And uh, every so often they have a uh, like a monthly challenge or something like that. So uh, this was in the they have groups as well inside this website, and uh, they uh, they have a loose watercolor painting group, and that group. Uh, for the month of February has a challenge to do a two brush painting challenge of a watercolor. So uh, uh, there's a one of the members of that group, his name is Dan Soderland. Uh, he's from Minnesota in the US and uh, he put up this uh, photograph that you've seen on the uh, on my channel here while you're waiting if you've tuned in early. And uh, so uh, we're going to uh, try to paint that with just two brushes today so I'll see how we get along. I want to go over to my computer now and give you just a couple of brief uh, comments about the photograph and how I cropped it and uh, show you the value map up close and the sketch and I'll be right back. So hold on. All right, I'm uh, here on my computer now and uh, just have uh, about three slides I want to show you here, four actually, and uh, we'll get going on the painting. So here's the original photo that uh, Dan Soderland uh, <clears throat> posted on the pmpart.com uh, website. and. Uh, it's a beautiful scene, really. I think he must have taken it in Minnesota somewhere. I don't know exactly where the photo is from, but uh, this was the original. It was a little bit too, uh, the aspect ratio again was not quite exact for my uh, 11 by 14 paper, so I cropped it, and here's what the cropped image looks like. Not much different, it's fairly close, um, but um, I wanted to have it, uh, the aspect ratio to fit the, the you know, paper that I'm painting on. And as usual, I did a value map. And so this is a three, try to get it into three values, as you know. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I've got some very light lights going through the middle. It's got some beautiful reflections coming up the center. And uh, so I'm going to try to at least be conscious of these values when I'm painting. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, preserve most of those. I may not do it exactly the way that value map is because Kind of, re, kind of react to the painting as we're in process. Um, here's the sketch. Um, the sketch is on my website. You can pick up the sketch, the photograph, and the value map on my website. The links are in this uh, video down below. So if you want to go get those, you can get them now or you can get them later. And uh, we will uh, go from there. So here's, I'm going to go back to my uh, easel now and we're going to start this painting. Hello, Crazed Noob 82 Gaming. Wow, hello. First time here, you say. Well, welcome. Appreciate you being here. Hope I can uh, show you a few tips on, on my painting uh, channel here, and uh, we'll get going. So here I am, and uh, so this is my setup. I'm going to use my uh, camera controls here to uh, zoom in. Uh, I want to tell you that we're painting on 11 by 14 Fabriano Artistico cold 300 pound cold press paper today. So that's my standard. And uh, we're also going to be painting with uh, Holbein watercolors. And uh, so, um, so take me out of this. I'll get this camera set up here so that I can uh, overlay my palette. And uh, there we go. All right, so that's ready. Um, I meant to uh, show you the paints and the brushes first. So let's do that. Here's my standard painting setup for watercolors. I have a Sterling Edwards palette here. I have Sterling Edwards brushes and I have Holbein Japanese transparent watercolor paints. Um, with this setup, I have, uh, have three big bristle brushes, a small, medium, and large. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna use any of those today because I'm gonna be down to two brushes, so I won't use those. Um, I've got a one inch flat, I've got a half inch flat, have a number 12 round, a number 8 round, a number 4 round. I won't be using those. I won't be using the uh, half inch flat. I'm only going to be using my uh, script liner. So, so it's going to be kind of a lean, 
lean set of brushes I'm going to be working with today. Um, but that's okay. This is uh, what these challenges are all about, trying to get you to do something different, trying to get you to try something different. And uh, so it's going to be a little fun to try to do this. So uh, now let's go back and talk about the, the paints. And here they are. Um, I'll go around the palette and tell you what they are. Um, and uh, let you know so you can uh, you don't have to buy all these paints you don't have to have all these but it's uh, it's ones that are in my palette right now so I have Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, Ultramarine Deep Blue, this is Royal Blue so there's three blues very very dark sort of a medium dark and then this Cobalt Blue has a little bit of uh, green in it, Permanent Violet, Gray Green, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Scarlet, Bright Rose, Brilliant Orange, Quinacridone Gold, Yellow Deep, and Cadmium Yellow Lemon. So that's the paints I've got to work with and these two brushes. <clears throat> I do have a little bit of a white gouache here that I may use <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the painting to maybe put some highlights on uh, on the snow areas here. I don't know if I'm going to need that yet or not, but uh, anyway, if I do, I've got the gouache at hand here so I can use it. So, all right, let's get going. I'm going to start with my big brush, clear water, and uh, I'm going to just start putting some uh, clear water on the top of this. Um, this, again, is 300-pound paper, so it does absorb a lot of water. Um, it stays wet for quite a while, and uh, so again, we're trying to concentrate on painting loose, which means you're you're not trying to paint every stick and twig in the painting and the photograph. You're not trying to uh, uh, replicate the photograph uh, exactly. You're trying to give sort of it's kind of an impressionistic type of way of painting uh, because when you squint your eyes and look at the photograph, you kind of just see a lot of dark and mid, mid value and light, light areas and uh, they're just like big, big shapes. So um, one of the things that a big brush forces you to do is it forces you to um, try to make those shapes into something without, um, without painting with a detailed, small little detailed brush. So I'm going to start with my uh, cobalt blue here, and we're going to put this sky in the background. And I think I'm going to cover almost all of that area I just wet, wet down up there, um, and uh, see how it works here. Now remember, this paint dries probably 20 to 30 percent lighter than when you put it on. So all watercolors, that's part of the learning to paint with watercolors, is trying to manage the amount of water that's in the brush, the amount of water that's in the paper, the amount of water that's in the paints. And uh, so I'm just sort of painting here nice and loose, big brush strokes. I want to come down to, so I want to come down in here somewhere. Um, So I'm getting some running all the way down. I don't want that to run all the way down. So I'll get my paper towel. Come in here like this. And uh, just sort of stop this about right here. Make it go somewhere around here like this. Yeah, about like that. All right. Um, take some kind of clear water and kind of massage that just a little. Pick up some, uh, lighten it up just a little in the middle so I don't have one tone all the way across there. I have a little bit of variation here, variation uh, in the uh, value. And uh, I don't want a hard line, however, right here. I don't want that. So let's kind of 
massage that hard line a little bit so that it softens except I had too much water in my brush and now I've got one thing about skies when you paint skies in watercolor paint them and get out don't start putting a lot more brush strokes in there um, just get them in and, and leave them alone and then I violate that usually when I'm telling you that but anyway that's pretty much the sky um, I don't have much of a repeat of that color anywhere but I think I'm going to put just a touch of it down here in the uh, in this area where I've got some uh, some snow I want to probably have a little reflection of it down here uh, not much just so that it's not just in one place in the painting I, I want to have just a little bit that'll help maybe color oh you can't even see that very well on the uh, video I don't know because um, that's going to lighten up even more so it's going to be uh, um, all right so that's my big brush watercolor for my sky <clears throat> so I'm still using this big one inch brush folks um, I don't intend to use any other brush for most of this painting until I get to putting in some maybe some of the trees in the background and some of the uh, some of the other things in the foreground. I'm going to try to do almost all, all this painting with this one brush. So, <clears throat> since it is a two brush challenge, I have one brush, one other brush I can use, and I'll use that thin uh, rigger <clears throat> for that. All right, so now I've got snow here, and the snow comes down and it runs among these trees, and uh, so I'm going to leave that pretty much white paper, although I want to put a little bit of a tone in it because it does have. A little bit of shadow in it so I'm going to pick up my Payne's gray and in some of these areas I'm going to where it's like out of the out of the Sun because the Sun is coming toward us so it's behind us here so I'm gonna put in just a little of these uh, gray it down just a little maybe leave a little white on top in some areas um, this so this is supposed to be snow right so I want it to be light and I'm painting it a little darker than I should um, but it will dry again so I'm going to sort of try to fit it in here like this and uh, I'm getting a run starting right here I'm going to pick that up See, I paint vertically, and uh, so I want to, uh, when I'm painting on this paper, it just wants to run straight down anyway, so I have to uh, be careful with it, but I want to uh, give a little tone into some of these down here. I want to have a little tone down here in this area, in this set of snow, so I'm going to put in just a little a little of my paints gray down here. Um, leave a little bit of uh, room for snow on top, and uh, something like that. All right. So so far, you can't tell what I'm doing here. This kind of looks messy and soft edges. Always take clear water in your brush and just sort of go along the edge and kind of pick up, put down, you'll get a soft edge. Uh, how should I, question is, how should I set up a practice schedule so I can advance beyond simple landscapes? Well, um, if you're doing simple landscapes, um, you want to uh, advance beyond that somehow, just carve yourself out of time either one day a week one night a week one weekend a month two weekends a month um, and uh, and try to just practice something uh, I have several uh, videos on my channel that uh, are like beginner watercolor uh, videos I have like 12 lessons from some classes I taught a few years ago so if you look on my channel look on the playlist you will find watercolor uh, workshop is the title of that playlist. If you look at that, there will be like, I think 12 lessons, 12 paintings you can try. You can just practice those. Follow them on YouTube. Follow my uh, 
follow my lead and uh, you'll be able to uh, have yourself a bunch of paintings that you uh, have created. So just look at my playlist on here. I've got a bunch of them out there and uh, should be able to uh, make something out of them. All right, I'm going to work now in this area over here. This has a, it's almost too light here, but I'm going to put this down and uh, this is one of the rocks. Comes down here like this up against a tree. Then I have a sharp edge right here I want to preserve. Um, over here I've got some more snow. Hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, it's just sort of a commitment. You have to like carve out time and say, I'm going to, this is my painting time and I'm going to do it and I'm not going to let anybody interrupt me and I'm not going to, I'm not going to find other things to do and uh, just kind of force yourself to do it. All right. Um, I'm also learning how to use these paints, folks. Uh, I haven't used Holbein paints before, so my whole palette has changed, and uh, so I'm uh, learning some other paints to use and how to use them and how they react and so there's a bunch of uh, things I'm trying to learn. I don't think you ever, at least I don't ever quit learning. I keep trying things, trying new things, learning new painting techniques. I still watch some YouTube videos from some artists that uh, I like their work. Um, so don't think that just by watching one artist you're going to learn everything you need to learn. So uh, my painting style is sort of eclectic, I guess I would call it, because I I, uh, I pick up things from multiple artists, Sterling Edwards, Tony Couch, Johannes Floathouse, uh, a number of artists that I follow and uh, like their work, so I uh, try to uh, emulate them as much as possible and uh, so I'm pulling together here some I'm just kind of getting on a first layer here of some rocks so I can uh, make sure I know where everything is this one rock over here this one has some uh, a little bit of green in it actually. I think it must be a moss or something that's kind of sticking out here. I'll put some of that in here. So let's just kind of put this in and run it up that way and run it up into the snow. I've got some snow here. Uh, come back and pick up some brown. When I do a dry brush technique, it's, uh, it's where you take the uh, brush and move it very quickly over the paper and it gives this uh, it's kind of a rough texture that you get that I don't know if you can see that that well but it leaves a very rough bumpiness there that that's perfect for showing snow because you can snow, show the top of that snow by just pulling this brush over very fast and all of a sudden what's below it is, is snow oh you get two hours a day huh okay well that's uh, that's good. As long as your fiance lets you have two hours a day, that's a pretty good deal. Take advantage of it. All right, so I'm just putting in kind of um, areas that have uh, a lot of, I think I just painted over some snow right there, possibly. Maybe I didn't. But yeah, I think I did. I'm down here. Yeah, I'm down this last, so I just painted over some snow. Well, we won't have that snow. That's okay. Um, come back in here. Maybe I can make it dark enough that you might think that is snow right there. Okay. 
So I'm just throwing in some darker values here to kind of help define these rocks a little bit um, because they uh, really a lot of them and, and I don't want to put too many of them in there because that's one way to destroy a composition is to put in too many little rocks. Usually if, you, if it looks like your composition is busy uh, when you got rocks in there usually the best thing to do is combine some of them so you don't have uh, too many small rocks. Again unless you're trying to do a, a realistic, photorealistic painting, um, be careful when you're painting rocks because they, uh, they can get to be a little overwhelming and they can get to be too many and they can drive the viewer a little crazy. Okay, so coming down here we've got some some of these rocks have some interesting reddish reddish color in them and orange reflections. Um, I'm noticing as I'm looking at this photograph a lot more, there's some very interesting uh, colors in here. It's kind of like reflection from the ground up uh, that's making some of these things that hang out over the stream. It's kind of like a, a reflection coming up from the from the water below. Um, All right, I may come back and combine some of those because I was just talking about that, that being a problem that you put too many, uh, too many rocks in, you'll end up with uh, driving the, the viewer crazy because they have trouble making out what they are. So you have to sort of be careful about that. Okay, so I've got a bunch of snow up here. I'm going to put in some, some more rock color here. comes out around like that. Another tool to make, make rocks, to make the uh, rocks look more real, you can put on Put the paint on like this and then come in with one of your uh, a razor blade or the back of your credit card or something like that and you sort of can come in, come in and give it a something like that. You see how that works when the, when the paint is wet at a certain uh, amount of wetness you can do that. It's kind of like when you put in some trees sometimes if you get the the uh, rock surface just wet enough, it will work. If it's too wet, it will fill back in and turn dark. If it's not wet enough, nothing will happen. So that's a uh, another little tip I can give you. This thing sticks way out. It's all snow except for down here. <clears throat> Get some more of this dark color here. More of the burnt umber and Payne's gray make a very nice dark uh, so I'm going to kind of come in here and put in a rough texture underneath the snow and uh, hard surface there. So this is a little plateau with snow sticking on it out there. Got some snow here. So you see I was able to scrape out a rock here with the uh, razor blade. Here I got some rough texture by just moving the brush real fast. So there's a couple ways, multiple ways to get texture. Um, I'm going to put some of this, get me some yellow I think in here to give me some of this upward reflection. This uh, color needs to lighten up because of the sun shining on this water is giving a uh, little highlight to some of these things. 
Um, where is it? Over here. It's coming down here, like right in here, I think. There's some of that sun reflecting up underneath these uh, So it's supposed to represent that sun is reflecting off of the water underneath there. And so I just put a little bit of this yellow deep in with this brown that I have and it sort of lightened it up. There's even a little, little reflection like right in here, same kind of thing happening right there. All right. So now I've got this, I've got another big rock, more snow laying down here. Um, I'm not painting this as loose as I could. Uh, I have a little trouble with control. I don't like to paint too loose. That's kind of why I take these challenges on once in a while to see if I can really do them because uh, I like to be more detailed and more uh, fill things in more with my brush. But I'm forcing my loosen up and uh, it's another thing you can do is you learn to play with textures and learn to play with uh, the values you can kind of force yourself to loosen up hopefully and it does take practice okay that's snow in there this is put a little more of this dark in here like this Okay, so getting a lot of rocks in here, aren't I? This is all dry up here, um, pretty dry. I'm going to keep on going here and see if I can get some more of this uh, this rock down here. This rock changes color just a little bit. Um, maybe I'll put a little this other orange color in it here. That'll give me a change of color a little bit. Um, down here, this is that's. Trying to make sure I'm kind of following the sketch here. There's a there's a rock kind of that comes across here. I guess that's a rock. Maybe ice. I don't know. It's hard to tell from this photograph. Um, so let's just put in some more dark stuff in here. Okay, I'll show you another, another on this rock, where'd that rock go? Over here, I guess I've already passed it. Um, you can also, when you're trying to paint a rock, um, you can take a little bit of water and uh, just kind of wet part of the, part of it, the top. And as you paint down, you'll, it will blend and give you a what looks like a curved surface. So I just put some water right there and it just uh, softened that edge. It looks like a rounded rock. Sometimes these rocks look very angular and very rough. And other, other times they're soft and curved. So this one up here, I think, is sort of soft and curved, but I, I didn't do that with it. Um, it does have some things going down like this. Let's see if I can put this in a little stronger. I feel constrained with one brush, so I'm kind of forcing myself to uh, deal with this brush. And so this is a exercise in rock painting so far. All right, 
um, let's let some of that dry. That's a little dry there, but um, I'm going to go up here in this background. I'm going to pull out some some of my greens. Get a little room on my palette right here. If you guys have any other questions, please put them in the chat window. I'll try to <clears throat> answer them. Um, and I'm going to pull some yellow in <clears throat> to kind of lighten that green up a little bit. So I've got this blue underpainting here and I've got some of this green in my brush. So if the green is transparent enough and the yellow, when the yellow gets over the blue, it will sort of turn it more green. So I'm going to just come in here and put in some, some light green. This is another technique with the brush. You just let, sort of let, kind of get the water out of the brush and just sort of let it put some rough edges out there. Need some more yellow in that. Kind of works better with a smaller brush or a round brush even, but I'm trying to uh, get these things that look like leaves like that. Um, leave a little gap and come over here and put some more in over this way. I'm just using the side of this brush, kind of taking some of the water out at the at the base with the paper towel and then just let the let the side of the brush do the painting. Didn't have enough paint in the brush. You gotta have paint in the brush if you want to do that. This trick. Well, this is sort of a backdrop for a lot of these trees that are going to show up here. Um, so it's a looks like an early snow here uh, with the uh, the way this is still green and you got snow coming down all over the place. So um, just use your side of the brush. And you don't have to use two brushes like I'm doing here. You can use as many brushes as you need. I'm doing it to sort of fulfill a commitment here. More yellow. I'm going to make this more yellow. Yellow with green in it. This CAD Yellow Lemon has green in it. See how that works? Add some darker areas over here where they're more in the shade. Maybe pick up some of this brown even down here in some of these areas. like that. Get some of this out of my brush. Pull some more yellow in. I think this area up here has a lot of bright yellow in it. So let's keep going here. It's actually kind of connected behind the scenes here to these other trees. So let's just kind of join them together. of trees. So some of these areas where it's going to be fully filled in, I'm just going to pop in some 
heavy brush strokes in there and then come back with the uh, back of the side of the brush and just uh, put in a lot of these, a lot more of these wispy looking things. Uh, down here, make it soft as I can. There we go. Okay, so I'm getting a kind of a dark base here behind some of this, which was really kind of dark. Um, so I'm going to put a few of my browns in there and just sort of let that blend together because it's kind of dark in that area. So. I want to let this, this stuff is really running today. Down here it was a little darker. So let's put a few of those dark things in down here. All right. So I'm kind of at the ugly stage here. Every painting goes through its ugly, ugly stage. Lindy, huh? Barbara, hello from Poland. Lindy from South Africa. Great. Sounds as good. You hear me well from Poland. That's good to hear, uh, Barbara and Lindy. Both. Great. So let's put in a few of these things like this to start changing the color a little bit in here changing the texture a little bit, add some of these things to the mix. Okay, this is running. So I'm starting to throw in some tree trunks now. This is kind of dry because I put that that green paint on with a dry brush. So I want to uh, come back in while that's dry and put in a few more trees that just sort of go up through the canopy here. This, the reason I picked this brush is because it has such a nice sharp edge on it. Um, Okay, and there's a lot of them back here. I could spend a long time doing this, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time. I do have some bigger ones over on the right side over here. Bigger by bigger, I mean they're wider, wider. And they come right down to the snow line here. Another one here that actually comes down into the snow. Okay. Anytime you can paint over something like the snow, when you paint over it like this, all of a sudden you start showing more depth because you're putting the uh, the base or the trunk of the uh, tree in front of the snow. That when I put that wet in there, it made that soft, and so it started to bleed on me there. And over here, this was all nice and dry, so I didn't have the same problem that I had over there. So I got a few trees in. I'm, I'm probably going to come back and put some more in because I uh, think this needs some of the nice part of this painting. And I'll use my rigger after a while to. Uh, Put some more branches in, thin, thick, thick, thin, uh, make them different widths, 
make them different distances apart. Don't make them like one half inch apart all over the place. Uh, that looks boring, looks too repetitive. Um, so think about that when you're painting these things. Um, over here we've got another pretty good sized tree. Goes from the snow right up off of the paper. And there's some more in here. <clears throat> One right here. As long as that paper is dry and that paint is dry, you can come in and put these things on and they'll, uh, they'll look right. We'll make that come down so it looks like it's something's holding it up. It's not. Uh, Okay, all right. We got some long ones that go up through this area. Make sure I've got really only using a few colors here, folks. I almost could have done a uh, limited palette on this, but I uh, didn't want to commit to that while I'm committing to only doing a two brush thing. These things, all, some of them come all the way down here. In fact, I think I'll make that one do the come down here. Yeah. Or some of them come all the way down here. That this guy's over here. He's got some other things that join him and go behind this rock, actually, and come out on the other side up there. Um, so what we're doing here is making optical illusions. We're making this this uh, distance is uh, by putting one object over another. We're giving ourselves the uh, ability to make optical illusions. You make people think things are in front of each other and that sort of thing. Um, these trees down here are all growing out from under this big rock, uh, but they're sitting in snow, so the snow is white paper. Well, let's put this other one, darken them up a little bit. Just a little. Um, I want to make a couple of these over here on this side. We got some actually got some trees. There's one sitting on this. This is the one I'm going to put right out here on this edge. He was sitting right there. Something like that. Hope this isn't too boring, folks. I've uh, kind of got onto this putting these trees in and uh, making them go different directions, it kind of tells the, the story about the, that this is a rocky plateau out there. Before I put those trees there, you didn't know what that was. Before I put these trees here, you weren't sure what that was. Now it looks more like a rock because it's got snow around it and now I have some definition. Um, I can come back under here now and start putting in some of the, some of this uh, stuff that makes it look like it's really underneath the other, uh, underneath part of the rock, I'm trying to say. I have trouble talking and painting sometimes. I have to uh, think with your left brain and paint with your right brain. Okay. So you see how that's kind of shaping up? It's uh, looking very impressionistic, but it's still, you're able to see those rocks. Here I want to make this sort of merge in. Oh, 
Uh, Lindy, thanks. That was uh, get the glow through the top of those trees. That was uh, that was one of the ideas here to make this kind of show that there's a, a glow hitting on this rock underneath. And uh, I hope I don't ruin it, but uh, that's sort of the idea here. Put in some water in this and get a, a bit of a soft edge coming down here like this um, so they're just really rocky things sticking out here that are partially covered with snow and partially uh, soft this should be a soft here if I can make it soft to there yeah put water clear water on the brush and just sort of over and you'll sort of soften a lot of those edges. Okay, so those are looking like rocks. This one here still looks a little funny, so let's fix him. Well, I got this idea in mind here. Um, let me go from here up and make it. Now it's running down, giving me some change of color there and I still have this light under under painting this orange hopefully this orange glow sort of sort of showing up underneath here all right I keep looking back behind me because I have a monitor and I can see hopefully what you're seeing um, this area here has a few more. I'm going to put some other, a couple more trees in there and then I'm going to leave it for my rigger for the tail end on this to put some more of these trees in. But I want to help identify this. Let's see. That's this. Right in here I've got a tree that's sort of curving out of the snow. Uh, going up again into the canopy here. Something like that. Karen S. Guten Abend. Welcome from Germany. I guess it's Germany. You could be speaking German from anywhere, but I'm assuming you're from Germany, I think. All right, Karen, for your information, I'm doing a two brush painting challenge here, which means I can only use two brushes. Um, so I'm trying to paint this photograph that was uh, put into a website called pmp-art.com. PMP stands for Paint My Painting, Paint, paint My Photo, PMP, Paint My Photo.com. So photographers put their photos in and they would like you to paint them. And then every so often a challenge comes up. And uh, this is the February challenge I'm working on now for the loose watercolor group. So uh, if you're interested in that, if you're looking for paintings, you're looking for something to paint, people are always worried about getting a painting that they can paint without a copyright infringement or something like that. Uh, PMP Art is a good one. Uh, there's a Facebook page called uh, Photos for Artists. Uh, that's a good one. Um, and these are just photographers that like to see their photos get painted and they put them out for people to use and to uh, freely paint and there's no uh, infringement, there's no uh, problem doing that. That's why I like to do it because I have to be careful on my uh, painting channel here. I have to uh, be careful of not infringing on somebody's copyright or they can actually steal my video and uh, YouTube will take it away from me if I uh, infringe on somebody's copyright. Um, so it's very important when you have a YouTube channel that you uh, don't infringe on somebody's copyright. I'll put a bunch of these, a few more of these little things back here.
All right, I'm getting more more dense in there. I'm trying to get it to look more dense. Pick up my water that's running. Okay, down here. So this is all snow. Snow that's in a shadow. And then there's some more snow here. Um, I have some dark areas here that I didn't paint in. Like right in here, I think under this tree, there's a, a place under the snow for that tree to grab onto. So I'm going to just put in some rough texture here, dark pattern, and uh, run it up this way. Put in a few spots that help show that a little better. Um, how about some soft edge here? Soft edge, clear water, just touch the top. Okay, so now I also have some that cool reflection stuff going on here. I'm going to get me some this uh, yellow and orange and see if I can find a way to work some of that in, right, like right about in here maybe. under there, like that. And to make that a little more believable, I'll put some heavy dark on top of it, uh, like more right in here maybe. Still want to have that snow um, letting that bleed consciously. Over here, it's going to be darker. Put in some more dark. Now here's a case where I'm getting confusing under here. I'm going to just sort of combine this together so that it doesn't look too, uh, like there's too many rocks and too much splitting around going on in there. Um, big area there. Okay, so I'm getting, hopefully I'm getting something that looks like there's a little bit of this uh, surface of this rock. It looks kind of funny right now, like right through here. I want it to sort of curve around, so I'm going to try to let the brush strokes do that. Around here, like this. And uh, pull in some rough texture, maybe. And then over the top of it, I'm going to come back and put some, some of that dark on top. And uh, let it kind of run together in some spots, and uh, and let it come up here. We've got some more trees. I think I'm going to bring a couple of those trees down um, into this area. So I'm not trying to force paint those rocks. I'm not trying to make them look exactly like the photograph, trying to uh, make it look real. I'm letting some of the paint run. That's all loose painting. That's what loose painting is all about. Um, so let me go back and fix a couple of trees here and I pull this down a little further. He's right in there, maybe. Might put some more, I'll let that dry and maybe put something else on it after a bit. Um, this area here had some, this is the area that had some green in it. So I'm going to put that kind of mossy looking stuff in here so that it looks like it's underneath. And then over the top of that, I'm going to put in some, um, some more dark in here. So it looks like I've got a surface kind of coming up this way. Um, and just mix up some colors and put a few other things in there like that. So now it kind of looks like I have a rock that's coming this way. Um, got a rock that's coming the other way. Now this might be a place where I'll put some of my gouache because I that was supposed to be snow right there and I 
messed it up. I painted it in before I realized I was painting over the snow. But um, so I may use that gouache shortly. Okay, terrible Tom. Glad you're here. All right, this is all snow here. Um, there's some dark ridges underneath here that I uh, could be putting in. Connect that together. There. So I've got some nice rough texture along here from my previous. All right, it's looking like a bunch of rocks, isn't it? Down here, where are we here? Uh, this is there's some dark, really dark stuff going on down here too. Uh, These here, let's see, there's snow. Some of this starts getting into the, uh, it's not just snow, it's actually ice from the water that's coming down in the, this area. Oh, another little thing around here like this. And, uh, This is all this is all water in here. I've got to let that set for a while and let it look ugly for a while. Put this over there, pull it down. So who thought new painting rocks was going to be such a slow, tedious process? Okay, so this is even part of the water, I think. This is snow. All right, I do have this one big tree. I actually put this tree in that uh, was uh, not totally in the photograph. Um, I'm gonna show you a little trick here with how you can get a nice, get some roundedness in your tree. So this is a tree going up all the side here like that. So I want the left, left side to be lighter than the right side. So I'm gonna put some water Come in here and just put some clear water like right down this left side. And let it run all the way down here where it runs into the snow. All right, so you can barely, probably can't even see that very well, but I'm gonna now take my gray, my Payne's gray, um, maybe with a little bit of my cobalt blue in it to kind of bring some of that sky color back in and we'll just start down here and we'll go up like this okay used to be a little wider over here that's because it covers the whole okay so now you have something that's a little darker on the right side and lighter on the left side and the uh, the water that was in the on the paper made it uh, made the blending for me I didn't have to really force that blending uh, so that's just a quick way to make a tree where you want to have some some curviness cur curviness to it uh, Come back and put some maybe some texture in there somewhere in some places. Uh, kind of make it look more like it's a tree. Um, I also have this other branch setting here that's crisscrosses. Now if I put it over there, it's going to be too wet and it's going to going to bleed and not give me the texture I want. So I'll just paint part of it now. Right now it goes from here from this snow area. Actually, it's down 
further. It's down from here. Goes from the snow all the way up into and across this tree. So I'll leave that for now. I'll come back to it if I don't forget it. Um, make that sort of go that way. All right, so here I want to pull a few more of these trees down because they're not really covering. They don't look like they're in the right place, some of them. So I'm going to pull some down here like this. Even a couple of these, maybe I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring a couple of these down even further. I think down into this area, like hooked onto that rock there. These things do grow out of rocks, or from crevices in rocks, and uh, all right. Um, any more over here? I think one of these needs to come down into this rock here. Yeah, this one I already brought down, but he's kind of like fading out. Okay, so if I can make the one side a little deeper, like this left side, and make it angle up, it makes it look like it's growing out of that rock. Okay, um, this is fine there. A couple more over here, maybe a few more. All right, um, maybe it's time to do something with this uh, water and this area in here. Um, this is sort of a interesting bright yellow. It's got a lot of color in it. Um, before I do that, I want to put just a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a tone on some of this snow here, like right in here. I want it to kind of get a, a blue cast to it in some areas so that it looks like it's snow shadow instead of uh, just dirty gray. So I'm putting in just a little this, this uh, cobalt blue which is good. I want to bring that color within the sky so I want to kind of show that it's curving around making a Another plane here. Soften the edge. Run it together. Something like that. Um, this area here, I've already got a got some snow in there. This side here, this looks like it's uh, could be a little darker here even. I think I can pull down something lighter to make it uh, just it down a little bit more so that it stands out. I got this, this pile of snow here is the same, got the same issue. Uh, I need to show some curve, some curve in this curviness to it. Uh, way too blue, too much blue in my brush. Water, 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 we'll fix that. Okay, so that helps show roundedness, that the snow is sort of rounded, it's kind of dropping off so that it's like sitting on something. Um, these areas down here I'd already put some, some tone in down here. Um, I'm going to put a little more of that tone in down here to show they're, uh, they're getting in the shadow from the uh, sun. So tells you there's something shining on them and they're, they're, uh, there's some curvature going on. So all of this is helping to explain the lay of the land, if you know what I mean. If you understand the, that term, um, you want to make this go from white to a mid-tone to a little darker value. 
and it helps show that all this snow is sort of standing here, cascading or a little uh, avalanche or something happened here. I don't know what it was, but um, very light. It's just uh, light enough that you can kind of barely see it. But um, I'm using the blue of the sky, cobalt blue, for that purpose. And you don't have to beat people over the head with it. You can just kind of softly put it in, put a little water in it, and uh, leave some white paper there. And it will look like you got a rock sitting in the snow and you got snow sitting down here. So I'm quickly coming to this area I've been sort of avoiding. Get some clean water in my brush, and I want to come in here and start to wet this down, this whole area. Clear water. Always keep two containers of water, one clear, clean, and one dirty. That's a uh, good technique to remember. Okay, so now I've got this nice and wet in here. And now this is where I want to show the water. It's actually, the water is level, it's smooth. It's not actually moving any. Um, I'm going to try maybe this quinacridone gold. Kind of looks like the color I'm looking for here. I don't know if you've ever used quinacridone gold, but it has a interesting orange, goldy orange flavor color to it. So now this, since this is wet, if I come in and put this in and let it sort of blend and pull it down. It's darker over this side. I'm going to have to put another coat over it, but I'm going to put this base coat in. It's darker over here. Okay, there. Now, this is all snow back in here. Um, so I can take my brush now and sort of lift out some of these areas that I want to be really light. Pick up the paint that's in there a little bit and uh, I don't know if you can see that working or not, but that's kind of the idea. Go in and pick up paint, take it out. Could use my uh, paper towel, I suppose. Uh, but um, I want to just pick some of this up and let it feed back in that area there. And then we'll start putting some trees in. As that starts to dry, we'll come back and put some trees in it. Put some horizontal shadows in there. and. Uh, I'd be done with that. Um, I want to put in, this is really just snow back here, so I'm going to pick up a little more of my blue color and kind of indicate some more shadows back in here of some snow. Um, brush didn't get very clean there. How long have we been painting? Oh, we've been over an hour. Well, that's not too bad, I guess. Uh, this area here needs to have some tone in it. These areas that need um, some shadow. This is all white. I'm going to leave it alone. Here I've got some water collecting, so let's just pull down a streak or two in there. Broaden it out in some areas. We'll let that dry and uh, come back and put some more vertical uh, shadows in there. Some of it I need to hit probably before it dries, like right in here where it's got the darkest shadow. Um, come in here and put in a Shadow of here, kind here. 
because it's wet it will blend and soften off a lot and you'll be able to see that softness and hopefully believe that's a shadow of the water in the water over the water okay connect a few of those across some up here see how that works but when it's wet you get a certain amount of wetness to it you still have the uh, have that uh, soft blending and blurring of that water so far this has all been done with this one inch brush folks the whole thing that was the challenge that everybody was trying for so this has to be darker here along the edge of this snow And here I want it to define the snow below it. Okay, um, there is a little bit of a tree coming down, reflection of these guys down here. See if it may be too early to put that in. I hope not. Let me put it in and see. Yeah. Well, that's kind of working. So that, other than putting in some really now fine details, like small branches here and some small branches up there with my rigger, I think I'm done with this brush. Yeah, that quinacridone gold is quite a beautiful color, Mindy. Um, I'd never really used quinacridone colors till I bought these. There's a couple in here, quinacridone uh, scarlet and quinacridone gold. So I'm kind of having fun experimenting with those <clears throat> uh, to see how they work, how they do. Uh, try to get the rest of this thing here in that went up this way. Um, there, that's, that's a bunch of little things that fall off of this guy. All right, get my uh, script liner. This uh, is another Sterling Edwards brush. It's kind of a synthetic bristle almost. It's not pure uh, synthetic, but it's uh, it's got a rough rough texture to it. So if I want to scrape stuff out, I can do that. Um, come back in here and start putting in a few few more uh, trees and such here that kind of. Need a, need a really fine brush. I'm just using this uh, Payne's Gray and this um, Burnt Umber that's in my palette. So it's just sort of filling in some of these uh, areas that need some additional attention to kind of make it look more complete, look more like a, a woods. It's got some green growth in it and some snow as well. It's hard for you to see those. They're very, very light. Um, down here I did that one already. Let's see if there's some small ones. Back in this area, there's a few things to put in back here. There's quite a few in this area. I'm going to just kind of come over this and go through here, kind of fill that in. It makes it kind of pulls it together. This guy here, I don't like the look of him. He's sort of funky looking. I'm going to put a, fix his 
tail here. He's got to come down more like this. All right. Um, some dark in there. There's just a, a lot of these things going on. Um, things coming out down here, going up like this. Um, there's big things sticking out of the snow right in here. They're like, um, I don't know, trunks or something, or just wood or pieces of wood that's sort of sticking out. There's a bunch of stuff like right in here. There might be some things hanging off of this guy. I think there was some, some, uh, this is a dead branch, so it's probably got a bunch of stuff on it that <clears throat> hanging around. Some things coming across here out of the snow. So it's just trying to put in some fine calligraphic type details in here to finish this thing off. Um, these things are, I think they're covered with snow because they've got, had an avalanche or something, kind of, snow's kind of come down on top of them and that sort of stuff. Might be a few of these that kind of stick out over the, over the water here so you have a little more interest in here so that it's not just uh, pure uh, orange or whatever that color is I used. All right, I think I'm going to stop on this. I think I've got pretty much done what I wanted to do. Um, might just be a little more texture in here. Let's see if I can do with this brush like that. There's a area here that was just sort of left untouched and uh, so I wanted to just put in a few things there and then as a last resort come back with my very full very wet brush and uh, I'm gonna throw in some more splatters here kind of just let it um, let it go wherever it will let it do whatever it will it'll just kind of add some texture to this to look like there's some dirty marks and dirty stuff on the snow. It could be leaves that have fallen, it could be anything. If you just it just tends to loosen up a painting when you put something like this in there and you just flick it in with a big brush that's got a big um, tall set of bristles on it. Um, all right, I think. I might find a few more things to do on this after I stop the video, I don't know, but I'm going to uh, stop it, put my name on this thing and stop it now. Uh, so let's sign it down here somewhere if I can find a nice clear place that I haven't messed up. Like right about here maybe. All right. All right, folks, we've been going a little over an hour, hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes. And uh, I hope that looks like a rocky cliff with water running through it with uh, some nice reflections and shadows. So hopefully you will like that. Hopefully you can give that a try. And uh, I think that's all I want to uh, do today. Um, please check out my Facebook page, check out my website. The sketches and the photographs for this are on my website. The value map, the original photo, and the sketch. And uh, check out that, uh, that pmpart.com if you want and look at the different groups. There might be a group there that you're interested in and people are putting photographs out there and uh, would like you to paint them. And uh, I want to thank uh, Dan Soderlund again for uh, this photograph that we've been able to work on today. And uh, so uh, I think that's all I want to say until I see you again. This is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.